Welcome to the School of Salvation, Chapter 6. Reading from 1 Corinthians 2, 4, says, And my message and my preaching were not in per persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. I want you to know that that which I'm going to share today is something that I live. It is not something that I have learned out of a book. It is revelation as God has revealed his word to me and ha I have incorporated it into my life. And my life has become a testimony of the power of his word, his purpose, and his plan in our lives. I want to continue reading. Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine, 29. But Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not understanding the Scriptures nor the power of God. The Pharisees had come to Jesus and they were asking him, trying to trick him about marrying and giving in marriage in heaven. And he quickly re refuted them and said, Listen, you do not understand the Scriptures nor the power of God. I'm afraid in the majority of the churches around the world, all faiths, that there is a wisdom, there is a form of godliness, but the power of the Spirit of God that works within us is being denied. In 2 Timothy 3, 5, it says, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. That's a pretty strong word. If they have a form of religion, of godliness, but yet they deny the power, it no longer works today, it no longer this, it's this, that, is a lie. And the father of liars is Satan because I'm going to read shortly that the thief came to rob, kill, and to steal, but he came that we may have abundant life. Hebrews 7, 16. Who has become such, not on the basis of a law of a physical requirement, but according to an indestructible life? The life we now live, we live in Christ. It is a new life. It is under a new law. It is under a law that, that is not one of a physical requirement, but an indestructible life. In Hebrews 7, 12, which I think I skipped, <laughs> I'm not sure, for the priesthood is changed of necessity, there takes a place, a change of the law also. Now 7, 16, who has become such, not on the basis of the law of physical requirement, but according to the power of indestructible life. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have, I, that they may have life, I have come, and have it abundantly. Where is the indestructible life in your life? I look inside. I understand the covenant and the law. And I understand that the Lord came to give me life and give it an abundance. And that that is not sickness and disease. I am a walking miracle. Times and times. I think most of us are. If we're saved, that's a miracle alone. But if you're saved, why aren't you possessing and living an indestructible life? One of abundance. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. And the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Where is the joy? Where is the, in right relation, there should be joy, and there should be peace that surpasses the understanding. There should be life, and there should be health. And that's what we're talking about today, divine health. I've had doctors in the past tell me this. Tell me I was going to die. Tell me I was going to be a wheelchair 40 years ago. The rest of my life, had six months to walk. That, that was nothing. I didn't want that. I, I weren't going to accept that. I, I, I 
My wife half carried me out. I was going to trust God. They told me I was dying of cancer, and God took it out of my body before they could do anything. And he told me he had. That's a couple occasions. So I've learned not to listen to man, but to trust God. Not that sometimes we are in this battle. His glory is manifested in the fire. I just know who to put my trust in. I understand why I can put my trust in. And I want you to understand after the, today's message, this chapter, what he hath done for you and for all of those that call him Lord. In Deuteronomy 7.12, these are the covenants, and we had divine help under the old covenant. It says, then it shall come about because you listen to these judgments and keep, keep and do them. The Lord your God will keep, with you, keep you, with you his covenant and his loving kindness, which he swore to the forefathers. Blessings of the covenant, that, uh, that's what it works versus faith. This is the two covenants. The, this is under the works. He will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your grain, ground, your grain, your new wine, your oil, and the increase of your herd. There is prosperity in God. And the young of your flock in the land which he swore to your forefathers. Verse 14. You shall be blessed above all people. There will be no male or female barren among you or among your cattle. The Lord will remove you from, listen, verse 15, 715 of Deuteronomy. The Lord will remove from you all sickness, and he will not put on you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but he will lay them on all who hate you. In verse 26 of Exodus 15, hear, hear it once again. It's, it's the works of the law. If they would keep the law, if they would obey God, then they, God would keep them from sickness. And he said, I will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for the, I, the Lord, am your healer. Under the law, they had divine health. Under grace, by faith, not by the works of the law. Hebrews 8, 3. For every priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, so it is necessary that this high priest also have something to offer. Four. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are those who offer gifts according to the law, who serve a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. Just as Moses was warned by God when he, he was about to erect the tabernacle, for see, he says, that you make all things according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. Verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by as much as he is also of a mediator of a better covenant which has been acted on better promises. If this is a better covenant with better promises that we receive now by faith instead of by the works of the law, why is it that we don't have divine help? in our new covenant, one that was based upon an indestructible life. Indestructible. I want you to grow up, church. I want you not to forget, as David sang here in Psalms 103.1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. How many? All of your diseases. Verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfy your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. 
Bless the Lord. Forget none of his benefits. He hath poor your sickness and diseases. You will understand this more as we continue. Why do you go around? I have never seen such an anemic church, much less the world. Everywhere we look, they've got a new pill for this cure or this, for that or other. You know, I don't have headaches. I just don't have them. I, I refuse to have them. Because I, I saw you can take one, one type of medicine and it will eat out my stomach. And if I take the other for a headache, it will destroy my liver. They, they come on television and they advertise these drugs today. And they've got a pill for everything that you might think you have. And that's probably most of the problem is what you think you have out of the confession of your mouth. But we have health. And they advertise these things, and then they show these beautiful pictures of this little puppy dog or something. They're telling you all of the side effects, what it, how it's killing you. But yet we fill ourselves up. We fill our medicine cabinets up. We spend all of our money. We, we're worried about an insurance plan when we have a, an assurance plan. What good is insurance if you don't need it? I have an assurance through the broken body of Jesus Christ. I have a covenant that is based upon an indestructible life. What can the world or man or medicine do for me? Nothing. If you don't get sick, you don't need anything. And if you do and you come and he will challenge you. I've been challenged. I've had as much as probably... Recently, I really, I was found my place in a place I didn't feel comfortable and the devil jumped on me. And it took me a better part of the day to get rid of this terrible kind of flu they said was going around. It really shocked me. I usually have about the five minute sickness or something like, get out of here. It, it's amazing how stubborn the enemy can be. They think for some reason, if I have a bad day or something's going wrong, that suddenly this is a good time. He won't be paying, oh, I'm not putting up with that junk. The last time I left Costa Rica, I enjoy our coffee here in Costa Rica. I enjoy our coffee in Colombia. I enjoy our coffee in Rwanda. A prophet told me one time that I was going to coffee country. And everywhere I've gone almost, they, their number one export at the time I went was coffee. So I've been enjoying their coffee here when I went home. I normally don't drink that much coffee. And... And I suddenly had this little pain shoot through my head. It was like, what, what's that? That felt almost like a headache. And, and there's no way I can have a headache. And the Lord says, go drink a cup of coffee. I went and drank a cup of coffee, and immediately that little pain went away. I had drank too much coffee while I was here, and basically my body was craving that caffeine, or whatever it craved. I like coffee. It's good for you, but too much can be bad. And suddenly I went back to my one, two cups a day, and later in the afternoon I had this little headache. That headache does not belong there. It has no right in my body. If you've never trusted God for a headache, wait till they tell you you're dying of cancer, which is also a lie. It has no room in my body. I've been through that twice. We ain't going there again. I have faith to be healed, and for the dis I have faith that he can't even put it on all me again. And he won't. And I'll stand here until the Lord is ready to take me home. I love you. I want you to understand that it begins. You have to trust God. If you've never trusted him for the little things, you won't have the faith when the big test comes. And there are tests coming. And they come every day. But we need to trust the Lord, not a pill, not a this, not a that. We need to put our trust in God and not in the flesh. Exodus 23, 25, But you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless you in your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. 26, There shall, there shall, this is another copy of what I read. There shall be no miscarrying or barren in your land, and I will fulfill the number of your days, long life. Numbers 21, 8, then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent, a fiery serpent, the devil, and set it up on a standard 
And it shall come about that everyone who is bitten. Have you been bitten by the devil lately? You might need to look at that one that was raised up. We're going to share that. When he looks at it, he will live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he will live. You know, the, the medicine, the, the medical logo is this serpent on a stake. Because we look at that, we get healed. So they've got that logo. I think that, that's a good start. But you need to know who it was that became a curse on that stake. John reminds us in 3.14 and 15, and we always understand 16, but let me read 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life, even as Moses was lifted up. What? That we may look at that one that became a curse for us. He bore our sicknesses and our diseases upon his body. When we look to the one lifted up Christ Jesus on a cross, we walk in divine health. And if you've already been sick, call for the elders of the church because they're not supposed to be sick. They should understand this word. And they will pray for you Obviously, if you call them an elder, you must be just learning, so that you will be healed. I have injured myself. I, I ripped all my stomach line. I, I used to work very hard. I still do. Different way, but I used to do physically. And I ripped my whole stomach liner one day, and this doctor, he came, I went to the doctor, and he spent an hour putting my intestines back. It was like this under my pants, back inside, my, and, and he, there's no way to think you have to go have a surgery. And he told me I was going to be out of work for three months. This was at a time my wife and I had almost nothing. There was no, I worked about three jobs a day. And did fishing, working, water, all, all kinds. Anything I could do to try to feed the family. And, and I'm not sure if I was still on radio at that time to try to pay for the ministry I was trying to do back in the 70s. It was a job. But anyway, I had no, no plans or ability to go spend three and a half months laid up somewhere. Didn't have any insurance, don't need insurance. So I called for a couple brothers. Y'all come pray for me. They claimed it was, on, it was Friday afternoon late. They could not get me into the hospital, that I would have to be there Monday morning early, and if I had to get up and go to the bathroom, just lay on my back and hold that, and it would not come back out. Well, I called for the brothers Saturday, first thing Saturday morning. They came over and prayed, and I felt the heat. I felt the presence of God go through my body. And I knew I had been healed. So I called up the doctor. I said, doctor, he was a friend. I said, I don't need to go to the hospital. You will be embarrassed if I go. And, uh, and so, but I'll let you examine me early Monday morning before I, before, so you can call and cancel this surgery. And uh, I went over there and he poked for an hour. And sure enough, it had all, that, that tear, big tear there had disappeared. I have seen this so many times. I have took a hammer where I've injured myself and bust, burst the cast off of my leg. And, I, and the devil always said because I did that, I was going to have a bad knee because I'd ripped my knee apart. Well, years later, it, it, I had a knee starting to get sore. It, it's all right now. And, I, and the devil said, see, I told you. And the Spirit of God says, it was your left knee that you supposedly destroyed and had a, have to have a surgery. It was not your right knee. Guess what? They're both doing just fine today. It's because I trust in the body. I look to that stake with the serpent on it. As he was raised, I look to the curse that Jesus became before me. He paid the price. Those stripes that he bore for me, his body was ripped. That I can partake of the children's bread. I can partake of that body. I can live in divine health. He gave me all authority in his name over all demons and diseases. Oh, church, why are you walking in such fear, doubt, and unbelief? It's because you're not being told. I'm, this whole thing here is for leaders. I'm talking to pastors. Pastors, if your church is sick, 
weekly, it's because you're not preaching the truth. You're not preaching the covenant that God hath made. God forbid we've been warned to stay away from such. Those that have a form of godliness but deny the power of the work of the cross, of the Holy Spirit that he's given us, of the presence of God that we practice in our lives. The problem is most people don't practice the presence of God, nor of faith, nor of the benefits, who forgives all of our sins, who heals all our diseases. Galatians 3.12, however the law did not say, it is not a faith. On the contrary, he who practices them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14. In order that in Christ Jesus the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Colossians 2, 12, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your transgressions and uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all of his transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of death consistent of decrees against us, which he was hostile to us, and has taken out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them. He has the victory which has been extended to us. He gave us the keys to the kingdom in his name. I give you all authority. I give you, as a son of God, by inheritance, by by the promise of the sealing of the Spirit within all of us, we have been given the authority to walk in the blessings of God, which is divine help. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Forget none of his benefits. Forget them not. Please, church, listen. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising of our well-being was upon him. And by his scourging, by his stripes, King David, by his scourging, we are healed. Are you healed? How long does healing last? Is this an indestructible life or a sick, anemic, and weak life? That disease comes from the pit of hell. I'm going to read all that to you. In Matthew 8, 16, when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all of them. Verse 17, this was to be fulfilled what was spoken through the Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. What did he carry away? Our diseases. What did he, what were we, what did he pay the price for? Our iniquities. It was a total work for the total man. This is not hard. Acts 10, 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I want you to just look at this right here. Look at this. He went about doing good and healing all of those that were oppressed by the devil. Is sickness of God or Satan? It's of the devil. Jesus right here, the word of God. It tells us that it is of the devil. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. 
For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. God came. His Son came to destroy the works of the devil. He went about doing good, Acts 10, 38. Doing good and healing all of those oppressed of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He did it through his body. He paid, He bought us with his blood. He paid for our body through his own. It was torn. It was ripped. He was scourged. And by that stripes, by those lashes, we are healed once and for all. You can walk in divine health. I walk in divine health. I am not preaching something that I've made up or something I do not live. It is the children's bread, the body of the lamb. When they ate it, Psalms 103, I believe it's about 50-something anyway. Psalms 103, they came out when they had partaken of the roasted body of the lamb that night. They were partaking. They all left, about three and a half million men, not counting women of them, somewhere in that number. There was not one that was sickly. Not one, it says. Not one. They all came out with silver and gold. Yes, there's blessing, but that's not why we serve him. But they came out in divine health. There was not one weak among them. Not one. What was it that had suddenly given them strength and healed them? It was the body, that roasted by fire body of the Lamb of God that came and bore our sicknesses and our diseases for us. Forget none of the benefits. Who healeth? Who healeth all your diseases? He pardons all your iniquities. We're real quick to do that because we accept that because we're certainly in need most of the time. If you embrace the full work of the cross, work in, walk in divine health, there is prosperity. There are blessings. We don't serve him for that. We serve him because he has a plan and a purpose, and by his grace he is working in our lives. To bring about that purpose. And it is not for the works of Satan. John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and they may have it abundantly. They may have life and they may have it abundantly. There was a woman had an issue of blood here for like 12 years. She had spent all that she had. I'm going to read here out of the New King James Version. For some reason, the New American St Standard guys, it's in the Greek I checked, they left out about her spending all of her money. But I want you to know this is what happens. Came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her blood stopped. Let me read verse 43. I'm getting ahead of myself here today. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on the physicians had spent all of her livelihood on physicians. Oh, they didn't have insurance. No, she didn't have an assurance and could not be healed by any. In other words, she, she could not be healed. She had spent all that she had. Came from behind and touched the border of his garment. Immediately, her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me when all denied it, Peter Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive power going out of me, grace. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him, and she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how, he, how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your faith has made you well. If you don't understand that by faith that we have appropriated a covenant of divine help, even as they had under the law. How could they have a covenant under the law, which I've read to you, of divine health where he would remove all of your sicknesses and diseases and not have it under a better covenant with better promises? You've been taught different. And I, I, pastors, leaders, repent. 
You made a mistake. You didn't understand. You were blind. You were without excuse now. I'm giving you the word. I'm giving you the scripture. I'm giving you a commission to go forth and let them not forget that he pardons all of their iniquities, that he heals all their diseases, and that he bore it for them, that they do not have to bear it. Just getting healed is not the answer. Walk without even being sick. There is divine health. I live it. I walk it. I talk it. There's no place for anything Satan has within me. I will not allow it in his name, for his glory, for his testimony of what he done on his body for me. It's by faith. James 4, 5. Or do you think the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. It's verse 6. But he gives greater grace. We know what that is. Y'all remember the other chapter. There is, therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Resist the devil. If Jesus came came that we may have life and may have it more abundantly, If, if he came doing good and healing all of those that were oppressed of the devil. You resist that sickness. You resist that. You tell it it has no place in your body. And you start the confession for out of the mouth is either life or death. Oh, no, I'm coming down with the flu. There ain't no way you can put me in a refrigerator naked and I'm not coming down with a flu. It has no right to my body. It has no place, because I have died, and I walk in unison of life under a new covenant with with divine health, with healing, one that cannot be defeated, one cannot be destroyed. Indestructible life, he said. A covenant of an indestructible life. I supposed to have been in a wheelchair so many years ago. I had a spine that had almost collapsed. I never went back to a doctor. In the 90s, I had a guy, I was sharing this testimony. He wanted to look at my spine. I said, fine. And, uh, and so I went and had x-ray, and he come in there. He says, you have, you have a spine of a 21-year-old. I was, I was really getting old back then. That was when I was about, I don't know, 40-something or 50. I don't know. I feel pretty good at 69 this year. I'm 68, be 69 this year. And, and I feel wonderful. I, I, I know that God will keep me till he's ready to take me. And it won't be by sickness and disease. I can assure you that. I might go to sleep. I might whatever. I, have, I might, if I keep preaching these sermons, I might get stoned. But it is the truth. And you need to know the truth. And you need to know what God, the Lord Jesus, has done for each and every one of you. And you need to walk in it as I walk in it. It's amazing that victory under victory. I have an assurance. I care not about an insurance. It's a waste of money. I have, I, they've got this Medicare now that I'm on. And I have to go get a physical every year. It's a waste of money. They even thought they found something. I wouldn't pay any attention to them. So I'm perfectly healthy. I could have told that before they wasted their money. But because I'm 68, soon to be 69, they want some doctor to look at me. I could tell them what they would find. Everything almost perfect. Because of his body, not because of this body. Because of the price he paid for me. Because of taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ It has no place in me. I don't trust in insurance. I don't trust in man. I don't trust in any of these. They they, they do really good work. They keep the world. They they relieve a lot of suffering for unbelievers. But I'm not an unbeliever. He hath destroyed the works of Satan in me. And he's not letting him come back. Because Satan tried to kill me time and time again. Oh, the x-ray. I was telling that story. When he came back in, there's a... He says, what I found, though, he says, your neck turns a little to the right. And I'd forgotten all about that. I forget, forgot to tell people that I fractured my neck 
had a car accident, cut my ear off. And they rushed me to the hospital, and they put my ear back on my head. It was amazing. And they set all my head and all this stuff. The problem was I was raising hogs to put myself through Bible school. And I had no money. We lived without running water. And I had to get home. I had to, I had to the, the water pump. All, I couldn't remember anything, but I remembered my hogs had no water. And I had to get back, go back and, and get the water pump fixed. When I came to, I'd been in, I, whatever that recovery, I got up, I had a gown, they'd remove my clothes, and I couldn't even, they, they smelled, I'd been shoveling hog manure all day. I had an old floor, old concrete floor, I had 600 hogs on it. And it, it, it didn't work. I had to shovel all that manure myself every day. I had to do all these things. I was downtown, 3 o'clock in the morning, or 3, I'd, get, I'd be on the way, 5 o'clock, because 8 o'clock I had to be in Bible school. Did all of these things. I did all of these things. Did all of these things. Praise the Lord. And God enabled me day after day. I never made less than an A in Bible school. And I worked 11 o'clock at night. I worked all the time. I went. God is an amazing God. He had called me for this purpose. I gave up whatever I had in the world to go serve him to Bible school. When I finished Bible school, he sent me right back to where I'd come from. I ended up being a businessman anyway. But I was God's man. I've learned to walk in his knowledge, not my own. His leading. I made a lot of mistakes. I paid the price. I learned. Just trust him. Don't put any confidence in my flesh. It will lie to me, just like the world and others, and like their flesh lies to them. We cannot walk about in our own strength or our own flesh. We have to die to self and live to him. And we can walk with a peace, a peace of God. There's no fear. No fear in perfect love. And he is love, and if he abides in me and I in him, there is no fear. There is no doubt. There is no unbelief. My neck, I never finished stories when I started them, but it had healed with a slight crook to the right. So I do a pit. I never knew that. I had forgot about me walking out of the hospital, just taking all of that stuff off because I couldn't see to fix my pump and throwing it away. And God, I said, if you don't heal me and keep me, I'm not going to make it anyway. And I ripped that mess off. And God, and I never looked back, never even went back to the doctor. They had put all these little stitches in my ear that was going to dissolve. No need to go see a doctor. I didn't trust in my neck, my ear, everything to him, just like my life. It was all by grace that, that we were surviving anyway. It was day to day. It was amazing. It was exciting. It still is. But he has called me for this day as his prophet. And I walk it. I don't really talk it. I walk it. And I know the power of God in my life. And he wants you to know. And more important, he wants your flock to know that the thief has come to rob, kill, and to steal. And it's time that you walk in faith, in power, where is the power in your life? It's not in the wisdom of words. We come up with all these beautiful th this and that. I mean, and theologians can come up with some really amazing stuff. It's good reading, but there's no power. It has to have power in it for life, for an indestructible life. Amen. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus summoned his disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. If we have authority over all demons and diseases, why would we walk around with them? Well, just get out. So it's not only he's paid for it himself, they can't, they can't even stake a claim. Even if you get that far, tell them to get out. Be gone. I say, go, and they go, come, they come. The authority I have over all these demons and diseases. Amen? Mark 140. And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Move with compassion. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, 
I am willing. Once and for all, folks, God is more than willing. He gave his only begotten son to be raised up on that stake that we could be healed, that the curse could be removed. He became that curse, that that disease in the camp would go, that disease, that affliction in the church. Raise them back up. Let them look to him with the knowledge of what he had bore their sicknesses and their diseases. They do not have to walk in sickness and disease. Set the captives free. Proverbs 4.20, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all of their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Let me go back to verse 22. I want you all to, I, 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 I go to church, and I hear my brothers and people confessing stuff, and I'm saying, that you've, you've, got, you've got to understand that out of the mouth, that, that speaks to what we really believe in our heart. And it's either life or death. We speak it life or death. And, and, and it's woe is me. Oi, oi, oi. No, if you come, hopefully you come and give a testimony of what God has done. That Oh, the devil tried to make me, but God healed me. The word, it stood. It, 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 it brought health and peace and life. For they are life to those who find them and health to the body. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow springs of life, from, from our heart. In, in the Spirit, who gives life? The flesh profits nothing, six, John 6, 6, 3. It, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and are life, Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Well, what man is there among you when he asks his son, asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they, that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. I might as well read verse 21, 21. It's the same thing. The authority, the power we have in faith, and Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was, on, was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, all things... For which you pray and ask, believe that you receive them, and they will be granted to you. John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask, Anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Church, the, the work of faith, we've got so much authority in his name. I mean, we're talking about the elementary principles here of, of salvation, about hell. Because this is part of the work about being, having been forgiven of our sins and all sicknesses being, being born by him that we don't have to bear them. It was the blood and the bread. I, I'm afraid that we go forward sometimes, and I even worry about this. We partake of the blood, but we don't discern or understand the broken bread of Christ, which is his broken body. We, we partake. I guess we partake, but it doesn't do us any good. 
because we don't understand what, what he did in that. We really need to be careful, not so much. That there, I wanna, I'm going to read this a little bit later. God's not, unless you're really going to get drunk on the wine, as some of them were in the early church. But if you go in and just, even though you don't understand it doesn't work, doesn't mean there's a curse coming on. I'm going to explain that to you. But anyway, the whole thing is, given such authority and given such faith and given the opportunity where, where when we speak to something in, in business, a lot of times, I have to speak to situations. I see, I see the devil's always, I, I, I get to fight the devil. I, I've won here, but out there in the world, boy, he's still strong. And you have to speak to deals and, and, and contracts and this and that and to situations in the name of Jesus. Be fixed. Be made right. God, I don't know how you're going to do this. Uh, you go, you go, most of the time, he basically has to raise the dead, but he does that in the name of Jesus, Lord. Because we, we need another miracle. We're always needing miracles. We, we depend upon his blessing to my family, to myself and my family, that we can give and support all of this ministry around the world. Uh, and the enemy, he's given up on me, kind of. You have to be careful. But he has tries to attack the source that, that is the resource to this ministry. And so there's a daily battle. And there's a, there's a, in the name of Jesus, there's faith. There's a war that's waged. We, we, we think faith is in the church. No, it's in life. It's out there in life. It's not, it, it, we go to the church to be encouraged by our fellowship in one with the other, to be strengthened, to go out and do battle in the world, in our life. He's given us this indestructible life now in faith in the name of Jesus. Let's walk it out. He called us to be prosperous. He called us to be healthy. But yet most spend all of their monies either on insurance or on doctors or on sickness when God has already provided for that through his broken body. And then we wonder where our money went. This medical world has, has gotten really uh, in love with finances and monies. They've gotten rich. They don't get it. They're not getting any of mine. I don't need to pay them. I have an assurance in Jesus Christ. I, I trust him. They're, they're, they can fix this or fix that or fix this. I don't trust them. I don't need them. I'm glad they help others because they relieve pain. I'm not saying God don't use doctors. He certainly does. But it, there is a better way. That there, there's, and for especially my brothers and sisters, for the world, they know not the way or the truth. We need to share it. But how can you share a truth that you don't live if they can't see an indestructible life in you? If they can't see a confidence you have in an assurance in Christ Jesus. Why would they trust themselves if you don't trust yourself to him? In John 4, 4, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he than he is in the world. Is anyone among you sick? Then he, 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 then he must call for the elders, who should not be sick, of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Listen. Call for the elders of the church. This is, this is the young believer. I really believe that because I believe the elders should know what we're talking about. They should be walking in divine health. They should come, and God, God will heal them. I, I, when I got injured, I... That wasn't sickness. I, I, I needed a miracle. I called for two brothers. I was healed. And when times I had nobody, I went straight to him, and I was healed. Things were taken out. Miracles took place. I beat more than one cast off my body. They rushed me. I break, I've broken a lot of things in my life. I've, I've been very active. I've broken arms, legs, this, neck. But God would it heal it, and I still, I'm as strong today. I, it's amazing you, how... I did not know I would feel so good and be so strong when I was about to turn 70. It is exciting life. I have no fear. I have no doubt and I, that I will walk both in health and in prosperity, but I also know that I'm here, and because of that, God has called me to, to bring this message to you 
that you will have an assurance in him of divine help and that which the devil came. Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Get him out of your life. We, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Don't let you be one of those. Out of here in the name of Jesus. I have this friend. He, he's got the most amazing gift of miracles. Harold Wallace, I hope you're watching. And he says, get out, out in the name of Jesus. And you know what? They normally go. I, I honestly, I, I've been a, he was the one that prayed for my neck. I didn't even call him. He showed up the day out and all the way out in Dallas, Texas. Just shows up. Pray for my neck. God healed it. Left a crook in it, but it healed it. I would have forgot about it if it wasn't for that little bit of crook. Because I'm so used to miracles. How do you forget about God healing a broken neck? Because he's healed so much in my body, in my life. Restored that which the canker worm had eaten. Destroyed. And yet God healed me. Cleansed me. Saved me. And it's still a work in progress. Because every day I have to die to self and live to him. Remind this flesh, this flesh, you will be strong today. You will be able to get this job accomplished. You will not allow any darkness to come in, either my mind or my body. Amen? And in uh, 2 Chronicles 16, 12, in the 39th year of the reign of Asa, in his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet. Now, this is kind of, his disease was severe, yet even in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but physicians. Now, how many of us, you can still watch it, look at this scripture. How many of us Turn to physicians instead of God. Just, just bringing that out. You want to see the result? Verse 13. So Asa slept with his fathers, having died in the 41st year of his reign. Thus says the Lord. This is Jeremiah. I'm, I'm going on here, but, but, but just, but it didn't say, it said, even when it was really bad, Asa did not call upon the Lord, but trusted into the physicians. And in the very next sentence, it says, and he went on to be with the Lord. That kind of gives us the answer of the king that had known God and now suddenly was going to trust in man. Jeremiah reminds us here, 17.5, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes but will live in stony waste in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green, and, it will not be, and he will not be anxious or it will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease to yield its fruit. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give each man according to his ways, according to the result of his deeds. This heart, this man, this flesh, it is, there's no good in it. You have to allow the Spirit of God to rule and reign every day here. You cannot trust yourself. I don't trust myself. I learned a long time ago, if I tried to trust myself, I would fail miserably. But in Him, in Christ Jesus, I have all authority. I have help. I have blessing. I will be like a tree planted by a river when in days of, days of, of, of heat, the days of when, when, the, when it's not raining. Can't even think of a word right this second. But, but when in need, I, my leaves will stay green because I trust in the Lord. I will not miss the day of my prosperity. So many are trying to chase God for prosperity. Yes, it's, there's a prosperity in Christ. But it's when you die to self and you live to Him and make yourself available for others. 
When you're walking in his purpose and his plan, he will bless you. He will give you your desires, but it is in service to him and your fellow man. It's not, oh, look at me. You cut it off right there. You're in the play. You cut off his blessing. You cut it off. I want you to hear. God has given, if we die to self, we look to him. If we're raised in this indestructible life in the spirit of Christ Jesus, there is nothing impossible. Ask whatever you will in faith. You will not destroy yourself with it, and he will trust you with it. When we humble ourselves before God, he gives us greater power, greater anointing, greater blessing, because you will not destroy yourself or others. You will answer to him, because he that giveth is also the one that will lead you to what you should do with it. And when you have a free will about giving, you have an open heart, there's always a readiness. I always have this readiness because when I obey God, it comes back pressed down, shaken together, running over. There is an abundance, but it's an obedience about every part of my life, my health, my mind, my business, the ministry, my family, my children, my grandchildren. All that I have, I was purchased with a price. It was an expensive price, the blood of Jesus Christ. I belong to him. It, all that I have is his. And in that, he's made me a, a caretaker in his vineyard. But guess what? The caretaker walks in strength and health and in joy because it is my delight to be pleasing to him. I, I have waited. I've been so nervous about, I, and I don't get nervous very often, these shows are so, these chapters or whatever we call them are so important. This prophetic word to the church. Wake up, church! You're asleep. Forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, I want you to watch this, you proclaim the Lord's death until he has come. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lamb. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. Verse 31. But if you, if we judged dicrino ourselves rightly, we would not be judged crino. Now I want to talk about these two Greek words here. Dicrino is to judge. I'm, wait a second. I'm going to bring up the definition here. Here we go, right here. This is the Greek. You can see this on, I guess you can see it. It is, dicrino is to understand, to judge, to decide, to discern. I like the word discern because that, that's to understand. It, it, it can be doubt too or whatever, but it, it's, it's this process, dicrino, is an action to do something. It is, not, it is not where the next word here where it says crino, which is translated in English judge, that is, it's already done. It is already done. So if we don't discern or understand the body of Christ, then guess what? It's going to do no good. It's, the, the result is already, you're going to be sickly. You're going to die. Many of you, what the scripture said, I'm going to go back up here and, ver, and verse 30. Let's go verse 30. For this reason among you are weak and sick and a number have died. Because they were not discerning or understanding. I'm going to go on and tell you this is a practice we have to practice because these same words are used in that phrase there in Hebrews. But, but diacrino and crino, it's not the same. It's, they translate the same word, but diacrino is, is the action to be doing something, to do. Crino is done. If you, don't, if you don't discern or understand the body of Jesus Christ, 
then you're going to be sick and you're going to die and you're going to be weak. But he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat and drink. Drink the blood that has cleansed us, that has washed us, that we were purchased with. And this is my body the where I bore your sicknesses and your diseases. But if you don't listen to the word, if you break that bread, the children's bread, I'm going to read that, I think, and you partake of it in doubt and unbelief and, or, or a lack of knowledge, it don't, won't do you any good. It's not a curse. You brought the curse on yourself because he bore it with that body. If you partake of that body and you don't accept the benefits of the cross and the work of the plan and purpose of God in your life to bring health and healing and authority and peace and prosperity, and joy. Let me go on down here. In Hebrews 5, 11, concerning him we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who because of their practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. That word there again, that's cry, cry trino, trino, die trino, it's die trino, it takes a minute. A lot going on here. That to discern there, because of practice, because of practicing to know the difference, to understand, to judge what is right and wrong, they, they are trained to know good and evil. But many of you are not able to handle this word because even milk, the problem is even the milk of the word, because the body and blood of Christ is the very foundation of our faith. But if you, can't, if you don't understand and if you don't practice practicing the presence of God in your life by taking every thought captive to his obedience, that's what it's talking about, then you're not ready to believe this word, this meat, because it's too much. How can you understand this if you don't even understand the work of the cross? But it's there, that word, creator, to discern, to understand the difference between good and evil. You practice that. Well, in the body of the Lord, when you break it to partake of it, you are practicing the discernment, the understanding, the judging. What is this doing for me? In remembrance of what he's done, he told you, I bore your sicknesses and your disease. You are now healed. I shed my blood. We drink the grape juice or the wine, whatever you partake of. We drink that. He has forgiven us. We break the bread, we break the bread and then we run off to the doctor. He has provided through the bread, the children's bread. Let me read on. In James 4, 7, it says, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Pure for your hearts, you double-minded. And when he has taken some bread and he give thanks, he broke it and saying to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of what? He bore your sicknesses and diseases. Verse 20, and in the same way he took the cup after they have eaten, saying this cup which is poured out for you is, a, is the new covenant in my blood. A new covenant in his blood. He went and paid the price for a, which changed the priesthood with a new priesthood. It demanded a change in the law. And the new law, the new covenant, is one not over works, not over works, but of faith. What? About an indestructible life. It's not about a physical requirement. Oh, here's my one cow for you, God, and I'll keep my other nine. They're all his. All ten cows were his, and are his, and I'm his. I was purchased with a price. And I will do with all those ten cows, exactly as he wants. Amen. 
and he will bless me. And there won't be a lack in the church if that you will be released to the Spirit. It's a life in the Spirit. It's the grace of God that's working with us, the Spirit of God to work his purpose, his plan. We have spoken on this. I started out with, with grace so we'd understand it's God's purpose and plan that he is working in our life. By his spirit and that working of his spirit in our life, even in our health, is grace. The working of grace. When we need more power, more grace, we can come to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in time of need. We got to know, we have to know in whom we believe, but we have to know why we believe. It was the body and the blood. Don't, don't partake of the wine and throw the bread in the wastebasket. God forbid. But if you're not partaken of it in faith, it's still going to do you no good. But if you haven't been told, for you that are listening today, you've been told. You can go back and study yourself. But it's right there in the Word. God changes not. His Word has not changed. His purpose and plan has not changed. He, he knew before the foundation of the world that I would be here talking to you. There is nothing, nothing. He declared the end from the beginning. He, Isaiah 46, 10. The end from the beginning. There's nothing caught God, God off guard. He knew that Satan would rebel. He knew that they would be sinning. He had this plan, Adam to Adams. Adam to Adams. I don't know that that's, Paul says that's beyond, beyond anything I can understand to be a son of God just like him but I'm going to be like Adam. Adam to Adam. Y'all know that? Chapter 3 or something like that. Don't even remember. 2, 3, it's been, we're getting on down the line. That's a good thing. But I want you to know this is as important as anything. I did that to encourage you. I, I shared that early to encourage you. What, what, what an inheritance. Why would we squander such an inheritance as his sons and daughters today? Why would we squander that? But if we'll come out, be you separate, we preached on that, he would welcome us. He'd be a father to us. He has provided through his son that we can have life, an indestructible life. Verse 29, how much severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant which he sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace? How much more a severe punishment? We know if we go on sinning willfully. I read that in, in chapter, that chapter. <laughs> it all starts running together. But I want you to know, if, if we, we go on sinning willfully, there remains no more sacrifice. Well, the rejection of his body, his broken body, is an affront. He, he bore that curse. He was raised up on that stake that we look to him. The work of the cross the disease would flee from the camp. That was under the old. This is the new. The Spirit of God that abides in each and every one has quickened us alive in an indestructible life. One that has torn down and done away with the, uh, has destroyed the works of the devil who came to rob, kill, and to steal. He came bringing sickness and disease. Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all of those that were oppressed of the devil. He has provided through the work of the cross. You need to partake of the bread of life. This was to, to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which you have a great reward. For you, need, you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You've got to stand. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. If he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not all those who shrink back to destruction, but to those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. God, church, pastors, brothers, all sisters, 
Don't be shrinking back. Stand in faith. Be pleasing to a God that called you to walk in faith, to walk in light, to walk in peace, to walk in health, to walk in prosperity. It's a part of it, but that's not the whole. That's not why we serve God. We serve Him because He first loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, and He was lifted up on a stake. And we cannot shrink back and deny the accomplishment and purpose of God's most generous and amazing offering of His Son. How dare us not only trample down the blood, but the broken body of God. Wake up, church. Walk in health. Walk in an assurance the devil has no claim to you. You were purchased. You belong to him. The devil no longer should be working in your body, in your mind, in your life. You have authority. Matthew 15, but he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs. Where are the dogs? Which from fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said, O oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. The bread is the children's bread. But they have rejected the chief cornerstone. And it has become the foundation of light to us Gentiles. Our opportunity is yet a little while, very little while. We need to accept that offering that was made not only for us but the entire world. Jesus Christ gave himself that we can have life and have it abundantly. His body was broken that we can be healed and we can walk in health. He's given us all authority over demons and diseases. They shouldn't be around us anyway. Even our children or wherever that's too young, tell them to get out of your house. Get out of my house. In the name of Jesus, walk in faith. Practice the presence of God in your life. Practice the blessings of God in your life. Practice holiness. Practice blessings, prosperity, health, peace, joy. Wear a smile on your face. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Brothers and sisters, it's not a woe is me life. It should be an indestructible life. It should be an abundant life. It should be one of blessing and not cursing. He paid a price. In Psalms 103, 2, I want to read this again. I'm repeating it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, it's so important, and forget none of his benefits who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed as an eagle. Beloved, John 3, 1 and 2, this is a good prayer. I want to pray over you right now. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospered, even as your soul prospered, the blood, may you be in good health, the body, and may you prosper in the blessings of, of the covenant. 1 3. For I was very glad when brethren came and testified to your truth. That is how, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy for this to hear that my children are walking in truth. Brothers and sisters, walk in the truth of God. Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. I want you to listen to this. Listen to this scripture. Listen to this and then listen to yourself. Listen. With the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomachs will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the products of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. I, I have a problem sometimes of wanting to talk too much. It, it's just, I don't know if it's my nervous energy or what. But I know that I have to guard the words out of my mouth because it is out of my heart the mouth speaks. And it's amazing what can come out of our mouth if it's not guarded. 
But these words have the power over life and death. Oh, I'm coming down. I'm coming down with a bad cold. I can say some other things, but it gets too personal with people I love and are close to me because I listen to them profess the negative. And that's a confession of faith. And the power of life and death is in our mouth by our own confession, either unto life or death, either unto prosperity or not, either unto health or sickness. Out of our mouth, our words have the power of life and death. If the body of Christ can't keep, I, I wrote this, here's what I got. If the body of Christ can't keep mine here, how is the blood going to ensure salvation of my soul on the day of the Lord? Of the Lord? It is according to my own faith, not his offering or ability. Matthew 9, 27. I think that I kind of said that in that reading there. I believe the blood's going to save me. And it's this free gift, and, and I'm going to heaven. We have no concept of anything. I'm going to share more in latter chapters. But how, how do we do it? But yet we moan and groan and have no faith whatsoever. Because the other seems to be easy. The other we have to stand and walk it. But if the body can't keep us from sickness and disease, how's that blood going to cleanse you and send you to heaven? How can you trample on part of the covenant and not affect the other? Without faith, no man is pleasing to God. It's only in faith. It's only in righteousness. Because of our obedience, it's reckoned as righteousness. That's faith. Obedience is the greatest expression of our faith. If we're not walking in what he has provided, and, and it's always me, what kind of confession is that, and how are we reflecting his salvation? This is a serious message. I want you to be set free in the name of Jesus. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, us, son of David. And when he entered the house, the blind men came up to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you not believe that I am able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. He touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done to you according to your faith. I want to read here. It is all according to our faith. You have to walk it. You have to talk it. You have to live it. I'm going to read here Psalms 23. It came to me, there's such a fear in the church. And, they're, they're because, and, and because of that fear, we, we've always confessed this negative. And all these things come to pass in our life. We're doomed. Oh, we're doomed. No, we're blessed, and we should be walking in those blessings. I want you to listen to these scriptures. I hear this scripture read mostly at funerals. And it really, you know, encourages everybody. But this is really for the living. It's really for us. These scriptures I'm going to read. I'm going to get reading. We've been long. I would like to get on through this. But there's no fear. Fears of the devil. There should not be any fear, doubt, or unbelief. It'll hinder, it stops the blessing and purpose of God in your life. Let's read these. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leaves me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflowed. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all of my days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, God will dwell with all of us all the days of our life, no matter where I walk. He leads me by the still waters. But if I walk in the valley of the shadow, he will be there. What a, what a confession, a, a song of life. And there's always a hope for eternal resurrection and redemption. We know that part. We need to qualify for it through faith. John 4, 16. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. The one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Verse 17. By this love is perfected with us, 
so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because he is, so also are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. I want to read Psalms 91 to you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will bide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. It is he. He will come, he will cover you with his pinions. He will cover, he's covered us. And under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and board. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or by the arrow that flies by day or the, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, the devil, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. It shall not approach us. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. We are not the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, as we abide in his Son, Jesus Christ. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Here is divine help. If we abide in him, no evil will befall us, nor will any plague come near your tent, your house, in your home, your family. For he will give you angels charged concerning you, be to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands and, and that you do not strike your foot against a stone. He's given us angels. We have guardian angels, but he's given us the Holy Spirit and the authority as a son. Verse 13, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample down. Because he has loved you, Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and yet and let him see my salvation. You know, this is God speaking to him. The Lord is my strength, this is David, and my song, and he has become my salvation. The sound of, joy, of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I will not die. Listen, I will not die but live and tell the works of the Lord. That's what I'm doing here today. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord hath made let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, do save, verse 25. We beseech you, O Lord. We beseech you, do send prosperity. That's a lot of, a lot of what I hear today. Send prosperity, even though I will spend it on my own lust, <laughs> my own flesh. No, I don't think it's coming. Send salvation and, pro pro and prosperity to follow. And we're saved by abiding in his son. No longer I who live, Christ lives within me by his spirit, by grace. And he's working in me according to his good pleasure and purpose. And I will not nullify that grace by wanting to walk in the flesh. I will not nullify it. I will not nullify the grace that God has given me. He has purchased me with a price. It is no longer I, but Christ. And the life I now live, I live in faith. In Christ Jesus, the life that I now live, I live in faith in him. I die daily. He works within me. He leads me. He guides me. He empowers me. He gives me strength and health. 
He gives me, he prospers me so I can be able to come here and do this. To share the word of God with you. Take the bread that was broken for you. Partake today. This fear, this doubt, this confession that leads to death in your life and your family's life and in your church. Wake up. Wake up. The day truly is short and the Lord stands at the door. 2 Timothy 1.8 Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me his prisoner but join with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. That was not sickness. His eyes were weak some other things but he was not sickness. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was granted to us in Christ Jesus. He's called us for his purpose and grace. Verse 10 but now has been revealed by the appearing of the Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. For this reason I also suffered these things. He was beaten. He was stoned. He was jailed. Poor Paul, if any man ever paid a price, five times with lashes. For I know what I have believed. And I am convinced that he's able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Have we entrusted our bodies, our health? Have we entrusted? I, I'm, Paul said, I'm convinced. He's been through all these horrific things. Yet he knows. He's convinced more than ever. Because the Lord delivered him out through all of those. Through all of them. He's convinced more than ever. Are you convinced today? I'm going to pray for you in a minute. We need to be convinced. We need to know, because to know him, to know the Son of God whom the Lord sent, and to know the Father, that is salvation. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not know that this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you unless, is, is in you unless indeed you fail the test. But I trust that you will realize that we ourselves do not fail the test. I'm praying that there's many here that do not fail the test. But if you're allowing sickness and disease to destroy your life and your ministry, you are at least not understanding or discerning what he has done for you through his offering, his broken body. Please don't reject the work of the cross, the work of Jesus Christ. Who came, don't, don't miss out on the benefits. He not only pardons our iniquities, but he heals us of all our diseases and afflictions. We have divine health by faith in Son, Jesus Christ, just as they had it by works. But we have a new priest with a new priesthood that, that ma makes it mandatory that we have a new covenant, so we have a new law. Not one based upon a physical requirement, but an indestructible life. Walk in, Father, right now. They need to know the work that you have provided. You offered your son out of love for each and every one here. Let them understand. That they may walk in there. Be healed in the name of Jesus now, that you, you that are afraid. Be healed. Walk in peace. Walk in prosperity. Walk in divine health. It is the children's bread. Let not, don't be like Asa and trust in man and go on to be with the Lord. There's a work to do. God has a place and a purpose for all of us. We've all been committed to the ministry of reconciliation. Raise up, fulfill that ministry of evangelism in your life. Visit your neighbor, but walk, go in strength. Share, look what God has done for me. I am a walking miracle. I am every day of my life, and I know that. It is not by my own strength. It is by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ as his spirit dwells and works in me for his purpose and plan. And a major part of that plan was for such a day as this to share this word with all of you that are listening, that you may set free. And those the Lord sets free is free indeed in the name of Jesus.
Amen. I love you.